everyone, I'm John Hagerman, the Bald Gourmet. I'm not really a chef, as most of you will probably realize very quickly here, but I am somebody who's very interested in cooking, particularly since last year I had three stents put in my heart. I was 95% locked and this close to checking out, and I didn't even know it. If I'd learned what I'm going to show you today, five or ten years ago, I would not have needed those stents. My heart wouldn't have gotten, you know, my arteries would not have gotten as clogged as they have. What I'm going to show you today is the first in a whole series of lessons on how to use something I've recently discovered called waterless cookware. When you're using waterless cookware, you don't add water, you don't add grease, you don't add butter or lard or any of those things that can clog up your arteries and mess up the health. Um, I discovered it at a show. I've had my own kitchen gadget company for a while and discovered a show and was very intrigued by how she demonstrated the cooking and most impressed by the quality of the food that she brought out. My rules for cooking, as you'll discover, is it's got to be fun, fast, easy, and tasty. If it's not all four of those things, I'm not particularly interested in doing it and I really don't expect you to be either. But I like to eat, so I mean it's got to be healthy, got to be tasty. The first dish I'm going to do today is called a veggie medley, vegetable medley. I'm basically going to take uh, a one quart pan, and you can see there's nothing in the pan here. No surprise, I'm not hiding anything in there. I'm not going to put any water or anything like that into it. I'm going to take a one quart can pan, and I'm going to put in just four vegetables for you. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put in some carrots and we'll put that in the bottom of the uh, pan. We'll have my little handy dandy uh, uh, veggie cutter. I'm going to have to dirty up a pan, a uh, knife and a counter and a cutting board to put these in. Just slice them right up. You don't have to have one of these. You can use any kind of knife to do the job. Now, Arrange those on the bottom of the pan so it'll be ready to go. The next thing, oh, by the way, do you know what medicine is in carrots? That's right, it's beta carotene. Beta carotene is the first preventative for cancer, and we go grow it right in our own gardens. It's great for improving eyesight, it's great for reducing blood pressure, and it also prevents heart disease. So it's a great vegetable to start with, a great vegetable to eat all the way around. Now the second thing I'm going to add is I'm going to add some broccoli flowers here. Just put those in there and around there. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put in some corn. I'm just using a good sharp knife for cutting up the corn into smaller pieces. Now, you don't have to have the same tools I do to do this. The only thing you really need is a sharp knife and most importantly, a tool for cooking waterless in a good pan for doing it. So I've got my... Uh, corn in there. Now the other thing I'm going to include with this is some red peppers. Now here's a little tip for you. You're always going to want to include something yellow and something red. You know why? Because red and yellow makes kids hungry. If you ever noticed every uh, fast food restaurant out there what color is their signs? Red and yellow. They know it works. You look at McDonald's, Pizza Hut, uh, uh, Burger King. They're all red and yellow because they know that it makes the kids hungry. So you put that red bell pepper on the top around there. So when you open it up, it's going to be a little bit everything if you see right there it's a beautiful dish on that now you notice how colorful it was it was the uh, bright red bright yellow bright green 
and it's going to stay that way. Now, one of the things you should always do is rinse your vegetables. That's what your mother did, right? But then what did she do? She poured water into the pan, and what did she cook it on? She boiled it on high. Let it boil for 20 minutes, and when it was done, they sit there and stab it and jab it, make sure it was good and dead. And then what did she do with all that water? She just boiled the vegetables in. Poured it down the drain, right? Well, we would have been better off if we drank all that, that, that uh, juice and thrown out the veggies because that juice had all the nutrients, all the metals, all the vitamins, were all in the juice, and she threw it away. Well, you should rinse your veggies, and I'm just going to pour a cup of water in here to rinse these veggies. Now, I pre-rinsed them so they're not dirty or anything like that, but you see how just how shortly I left it in there? And I'm going to take that off. I'm going to pour that water right back in here. Got just a little rinse going. And you see this is not a non-drip top, so it's a it pan, so it's very easy on that. Now, I want you to notice something. Notice how murky that water is? Like I said, I'd wash the vegetables. they good and clean on it. I just pour a little water in, poured it off to demonstrate that's the vitamins and nutrients. That much left just in a few seconds that I had that water in there. Not a good thing. You want to keep that, uh, those veggies and nutrients, that's what makes it so healthy for you. Now, what I'm going to do, now that I've got it on there, I'm going to turn around and um, I'm going to cook it on a much lower temperature than you're probably used to. Now, this pan, I'm using an induction cook stove. You can use a, a cooktop. You can use a gas stove, electric, you can use the uh, flat top ceramic ones. Heck, you can even put on a campfire and do the same thing I'm doing here. The key is in temperature control. What I'm going to do with this is I'm going to turn around and put this on medium. But I've learned with this, even medium is a little too high for this. So I'm going to turn it on and get it started. You can hear it going there. Now, how do you know when the vegetables are done? Well, the first step is when you see vapor starting to come out from around the cooktop, it tells you it's ready to turn down around the, uh, uh, the lid, I mean. And you see right now, if I try to turn that top, it's turning the whole pan. When that steam starts rising up, it forms a vapor lock around here, so that top will spin just freely on there. And it's another way to indicate that it is ready to turn down on it. Now, this will take a few minutes to get to that point. And until it does, let me share a couple things with you. You're probably wondering, how do you cook without water, without grease, without lard, without any of that stuff, without burning your food? Well, first off, you're using it lower temperature. You don't cook it at high like we're used to cooking on it. You're cooking it much lower. But the real key is having the right pan. When you're using a waterless cook pan like this, this one is made by Kitchen Craft. Uh, it's the heaviest weight thermocore pan on the market. Instead of having like a, a uh, single layer of metal, like most of your, your uh, Teflon and ceramic and even most of your stainless steel is, this one has got seven layers on there. It's 110 gauge. That's by far the heaviest on the market out there. What that allows it to do is it allow in being the stainless steel on the outside and all the metals on there, it works beautifully with the cooktop on it. And it allows you to cook at that lower temperature because the heat goes from the, it cooks from the bottom up, the top down, and the sides in. It's cooking all the way around. For instance, when you cook in your oven, you don't put, put it uh, uh, in water in your oven. You don't need to because it cooks all the way around, all the sides at the same time. That's the same principle behind this. Basically, it's baking it in here the way it's doing that, uh, cooking from all sides on. So you don't need to put the water in there. Now, you also notice once this gets going, the top will actually get to be hotter than the bottom. That's the way it works on there. So it really makes it um, very effective for cooking. Now, one of the things I learned on here is that 
I wish I'd bought it like I mentioned earlier, years ago. Last year, I said I had three stents put in. Well, I got the bills for those stents, and they cost about $68,000. Now, those were outpatient procedures. I was in the the, uh, the office for you needed no more than an hour or two, and they did those on $68,000. Now, fortunately, I have good insurance. They paid most of it, but my share of that was $12,000. If I bought this or had this cookware uh, 10 years or even five years ago, I probably never would have needed those stents because I would have been eating much healthier on it. And besides the health on here, what you're going to discover, this isn't just healthy. It's incredibly good to, t to eat, good tasting. Like I said a little while ago, it needs to be fun, it needs to be fast, it needs to be ace easy, and it needs to be tasty, or I'm not going to do it. This fills the bill all the way around. Now, I had a lot of junk in my arteries, that's why I need those heads. But today, eating healthy is even more important. With all the stuff that's going on in the world, it's a crazy time on it. We all need to be very aware of what we're eating. We need to strengthen our bodies, strengthen our immune systems to fight all the stuff that's out there and fight that uh, uh, coronavirus out there and anything else that might be coming out. So cooking healthy is incredibly important on it. Let's see, now you see that top is spinning. It means it's time to turn this down. And I'm gonna turn it down there. I turned it to low. Now you see that top immediately stopped spinning. It's still sealed on there but it's sealed all the way up, so it's not gonna keep spinning on it while it cooks. I've got it down to just 100 degrees, and that's probably a little high in and of itself on it, but that's okay, I'm gonna leave it at 100, and hopefully it won't burn. Now, when you're looking at a house, what's the most expensive room? It's the kitchen, right? If you've ever remodeled your kitchen, you know it costs thirty, forty, fifty thousand, or maybe more, or a whole lot more. But what do we do after we've done the kitchen? We fill it with pans like this. Now you might recognize this. This was for years. You can see it's well worn. One of my favorite pans. It's what I cooked all of my breakfasts in. Your dad probably used something like this. It's good old Teflon or as it's called pretty quickly, Teflon. This coating will last a year and then it starts flaking off and you throw it away. It goes into a landfill someplace and you buy another one. You spend 20 or $30 for one of these pans. So you replace it every year. Over 25 years, you've spent $700 for this little pan, okay? Uh, instead of buying the white pans up front, you spent 700 bucks for something like this. And now, see all this, I don't know if you can see this on the camera, I don't think you can yet. This is flaky. And not only is it a cheap pan, you throw it away, you pollute the earth, but I don't know what kind of pollution that Teflon and it's flaking off is putting in my body, what it's doing, and I don't want to know. I've got enough to deal with to not deal with that. But that Teflon, Teflon, becomes tap long and it really can mess your body up. Now, you might recognize this one, the good old cast iron scale. This is re, re, uh, having a resurgence lately. It's been very popular. You put a steak in that, sear it, and throw it in the oven, all that. If you ever had your grandma's, uh, oh, now grandma's cornbread, did it in a, a uh, cast iron pan, and it was quite good. But one thing about cast iron, you don't wash it. If you wash it, you mess up the seal on it. What happens is all the grease, all the food, all the other stuff on here seals up that pan. And then you don't wash it, you just wipe it out. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm not thrilled at the idea of eating something that was cooked in a pan that you never wash. And to give you a good idea of what that does, sometime take your, your cast iron pan, your good, well seasoned, ready to go cast iron pan, pour a little water in it, and then just boil it. Put it on the stove and turn it to boil. What you'll see is little worms coming out of those pores on there. I don't know about you, but I don't want to eat those worms. I don't want them in my food. So that's the cast iron. They do a job, but remember, they're only cooking from one side. Like your stainless steel pans, single air ones, it cooks from one side. It doesn't conduct heat very well. Aluminum, 
that's still out there. It could, conducts heat beautifully. I wish I had one. Right now, I can't get out to the stores to see if I can find one, so I can really show you what it does. Uh, but did you know you're not allowed to feed a defense animal, a pet, out of a pan, the aluminum pan? They lick it, that metal gets in their system, and it kills them. It gives them seizures, it can kill them. If you ever take a metal pan, you use a, like a scotch bite pad on it, it turns black. Well, what that black is, is the aluminum, and it gets into the food, and it's really bad for you as well. Uh, one of the reasons I like cook at home now is when I discovered that a lot of restaurants cook, they do their uh, cooking in aluminum pans because it's fast heat on that. I don't want to do that either, so I like using a uh, good pan like this. Now... When you're using something like this, the key, like I said, is to cook low. Now, I've got this down to 100 degrees. I can actually turn it off and just let it cook. That top is hotter than the bottom on it. I could turn it, uh, turn it off, let it cook for 10 minutes, and it'll be ready to go anyway. Now, we've got several more minutes to go before this will be ready. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the camera off for just a minute. Don't worry, I'm not going to pull any tricks on you while the camera's off, rather than have you wait for that time until it's ready to go. So I'll be back in a couple of minutes. You'll see how beautiful the food came out. You'll see how good it tastes, how good it looks. I'll show you a couple more tricks on that. Well, I actually lied to you. We weren't gone for very long at all, and I discovered that this is ready to go. So I'm going to turn off the cooktop. It wasn't very many minutes at all, and there's less than 10 minutes on it. Now, what you can do with this, well, one of the things I want to show you, by the way, this is hot on the top, so you don't want to be touching that. You can bring your hands on it. You see this? It's a finger guard. So I can turn around and use that. I'm not going to worry about burning my hands. I'm not going to, there's a guard here and a good thumb grip on it, pistol grip, so I'm not going to worry about burning my hands there. The handle, there's stainless steel that comes all the way up on there. So if you've got a gas stove, you're not going to have to worry about it getting burned down there. So I've got a good solid hold on it. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to take that pan, I'm going to turn it right over, and this is going to be my own trivet right there. Now, you can see right there how beautiful that is. It just turned out great. You can see the uh, broccoli is bright green, the corn is bright yellow, the carrots are bright to orange. Everything is the way it's supposed to be on it. Now, you probably don't want to serve it on here. You could, but I like to put it on a plate. A little trick on that. Distribute that a little bit in here. I'll try one of these. Ah, that's why you put, don't want to put it on a, you don't want to put it, serve it off of here. What you do, take a plate, put it on there, turn it over. There we go. Aren't those colors gorgeous? Ooh, I just got a whiff of that. It smells absolutely delicious. That's done just perfect. It's not a, um, it's not crunchy. It's not mushy. It's got a nice bite to it. Good texture on that. Mm. Now, you notice, I did not use salt, didn't use pepper or butter. I didn't put anything in here. I just, the water from the inside the veggies and the water that was clean to the outside the veggies, and that's it. One thing I noticed when I first started doing this, is I thought, well, gee, this is going to be very bland without salt and all that. 
But when you start doing it this way, what you realize is those veggies are the way they're supposed to be. You don't need the butter and all the other stuff to try to make it taste good. The taste of the veggies are so wonderful on their own, you don't need anything else. Mm. That corn is absolutely perfect. Mm. I won't make you sit there and watch me eat all of it. Just trust that it's very, very tasty. Now, like I said at the beginning, I'm not a chef. This whole series I'm launching on today is going to be an adventure for me in cooking. I'm going to be coming back a couple times a week, maybe more, hopefully more, showing you new recipes, showing you new tricks to use with your pan. So I hope you'll rejoin me on it. Now, one of the things I'm going to do here real quick, your cleanup on this. You clean your pan up while it's still warm. It's going to clean up much easier. I just took a paper towel. It's clean and it's ready to go. It's that easy for cleanup on it. Everything about this is easy. You can do it. Your kids can do it. One of my compatriots has her five-year-old cooking steaks for the whole family. Not even out of preschool yet, cooking like this for them. So it's real easy to do. It's fun to do. Like I said, fun, fast, easy, tasty, and healthy. You can do it. Come back and join me. I'll let you know when the times are, and we'll see what I can cook up next for you. Thank you for showing up today.